Hello there, I am Gifty Auntie and welcome to TSB with Gifty Auntie. Who can deny Gifty? No. I don't think anyone sir. Thank you for having me. And you for Hello there, I am Wahiri with Gifty Auntie and welcome to TSB with me. Today... Yes, the last Sunday of the month of September 2024. I bring you an amazing woman who has an, a phenomenal story. She's been on TSP, Ben's standpoint, a few times. But every time, talking about autism, talking about her son, talking about other issues. But today, we get to capture her own story because guess what she matters too and without her journey and the things that have come together to make her who she is today in fact the basics her upbringing i wonder if she could have been or become the mother the mouthpiece the voice that she is today. Before I introduce her, let me say thank you to Tie Dye Yakua for my beautiful tie and dye. My outfit, you know, I think, I, yeah, this is Rich Auntie vibe. In fact, Rich Auntie, who is still the hustle <laughs> vibe. Thank you very much. It's by Liran Collection. Thank you so much. My earrings, my beads, you know, um, anklets by Twinny Crafts. Makeup beautifully done by the Global Makeup Products by Sigma by mabel sigma by mabel they are at uh, mokola thank you so much to them and then of course my beautiful bordering by studio accessories ladies and gentlemen let me introduce to you the amazing the phenomenal the energetic the women filled with holy anger auntie we call her auntie sewa she's we said sewa queno <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Today we are going to hear your own story. Okay. <laughs> Please Let's take go. a seat. Well, I'll be back. Welcome back to TSP with Gifty Auntie. And my guest is Auntie Se Wakueno, the woman who has been a voice for uh, parents and indeed guardians and young people, people in general who have autism, you know, challenges across all spectrums. Before I get to talk to Auntie Sewa and capture her on Toast Story, let me say thank you to Old Mutual. Old Mutual Retirement Salary Plan is a one-stop investment. All you need to do is to invest or deposit a lump sum. And for the rest of your life, you are going to enjoy retirement salary. You will receive the alert every single month. Can you believe it? Yes, it is true. All you need to do is to contact them today. Their details are on the screen. Call them, place a call, send a WhatsApp, and they will come and have that conversation with you. I am a beneficiary for the past, since June, so for the past about three, four months. And I can tell you that it works. Old Mutual, Abrabopa, Ahoto, Enkwa. I also like to say thank you to Venom Mineral Water. Venom Mineral Water has a balanced pH level. It has all the right minerals in it. It's low in sodium and they believe in, you know, giving back to society, changing lives and sharing love. And I don't know if you've noticed, but if you keep drinking Venom Mineral Water, you keep looking younger. Auntie Sawa says, I'm looking younger. <laughs> this is the secret. And we say thank you to Big Old Drinks as well. Kidsville, where your children's dreams come true. I'm sure you've heard about my new book coming up, The Princess and Jazz. Yes, I'll be organizing a signing, you know, uh, program there this day, one of these days soon. So I'll definitely let you know about it, okay? Kidsville is on the Spring Test Road. I just sent to um noble house yes and they're open monday to sunday and everything kids you'll find it there and your kids dreams will definitely come true now let me come to 
my guest today hmm, let me read the accolades mm. accolades okay so she is Sewa Kweno. she's executive director for autism awareness care and training she's also a voice and you know an activist and advocate for children with um challenges or disabilities especially with autism and she's been for years auntie sewa welcome back home thank you you remember um, the first time was at yes, africa region exactly I was yeah, telling someone where, where you couldn't move your leg freely <laughs> Now we've come here. Congratulations. And thank I you. Love thank it. you so yes. much. And it's mm -hmm. good to have you on. Oh, thank you for having me. I just said, well, when you look back, reflect on your journey so far, what song comes to mind? Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Yes. Great yes. is faithfulness. It's been a journey. It has been 26 years. 26 years. Yes. How many times haven't you cried? I still cry occasionally mm. because when I think of the future, when I'm not here, I'm aging, I'm going to be, I'm 70 plus. You are kidding. I am 70 plus. I just said, well, you are what? <laughs> I am. I will actually be 70 something, 75 in general. No way. You mean 65? 75. In general. Hey! Yes. I just say what? Yes. Are you serious? Blessings in Kwan. Yeah. Hey! I am. Yeah, people look at me and they... Wow. Then, their, their bones are kind of creaky. But no, you but, know, but you're wearing, wearing heels. Well, well, look at I, that. I, Please I, come I, back. Catch <laughs> you're wearing heels. <laughs> and she walked in them. I, I, I literally only sit and stand in my shoes. I can't really walk I'm in. doing that <laughs> thing. I bought my... Oh, yes, so I bought my slippers. Wow. <laughs> yes. So if you are going to be 70, that means you are also a late bloomer when you had uh, Naughty. Yeah, my, I have another child who is 47 yeah. now. She she claims she's 29. Yeah, that's what. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what. Age is yes. quite a number. But then Naughty came five years after her. Uh, yes. Okay. And Naughty is now 42. Naughty is now 42 years. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, Amazing. How's he doing? He's great. Mm -hmm. He's. Actually works at uh, Kempinski Hotel. Wow. Twice a week. Twice yes. a week. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Does he still paint? Yes. The draw and all <laughs> that. You know, so he's, yeah, he's more into the world of work and he's doing, he does a lot of things. Right. You want him, he likes to cook. He's always there. He anticipates what you're doing because he's right. very sharp. Right. And he, now he wants to drive us. But for him, no, it's. Move the car, uh, yeah. he knows exactly where you're going. Mm. I mean, he's very sharp. It's just he's locked in right. with the autism. With the autism. But God yeah. is good. We thank yes. God. Yes. We thank God. Just, what's, your, what's your maiden name? My maiden name is Darfo. Darfo. Yes. My father is Ko. Okay. And my mother is Ga. Okay. Ganyobi. Ganyobi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, my, my father was like 98 plus, almost 99 when he passed. Oh, bless yeah, him. Yeah, about three during COVID, yeah, about three years ago. Okay. And uh yeah, okay. he's been uh he wasn't the cow man who was into business. So okay. He was uh book long. Yeah. And uh <laughs> yeah. Always reading, doing reader's digest. Right. Oh, uh, words, yes, I remember we just, words, I just uh, my father stopped them. Whoa. Words <laughs> with us, every all of us. Then the words you know the words and we all had no, to learn and write. Right. Yeah, he right. was proper. Yeah, right. but he was uh, retired as a senior principal secretary those days. Days, okay. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. okay. 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 But you grew up in Ghana before. Yes, you I did. Oh, definitely. I, okay. I grew up in Ghana. I went to Accra Nito Experimental School. Okay. This school, we called it. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people went there. Right. And yes. then from there, I went to Achimota School. Okay. And then from my Oh, you're an Accra. And I'm an Accra. Yes. I'm very proud of Accra. I can tell. <laughs> I can yes. tell. Okay. And, um, and then from there, I went to England. Mm. I actually went to England. My father wanted me to stay, but most of my friends and people I hung around with mm. had left Ghana. And my very, very closest person, mm. you know, her father had taken her to England. So I started planning when I was in like form four, 
how right. do I also go to England? Then I heard that people could go to nursing school. My father was against it. What is this? What are you going to do this? I just wanted to get away. To England. To England. <laughs> and also, and then my mother was very, my mother, bless her soul. Amen. She was tough. She was on you. And I, I wanted to... Typical Ganyubi. Which, typical Ganyubi. Which, which part of Ghana yeah. did she come from? <laughs> you cooked, uh, she's from Otublo. Otublo. Uh -huh. And uh, Sempe. Okay. Strong <laughs> combination. <laughs> and then she, I learned how to cook banku with my... How the people cook their banku. Because yeah. there's always somebody in the house. the house. So many people, therefore the amount of meat or fish you're going to have is reduced. Because <laughs> I'm not Jaham of <laughs> And I grew up in that kind of, my mother was very warm, bringing people, oh, but as a girl, yeah. you needed to learn to cook because you're going to get married mm -hmm. and how are you going to get married and be doing these things? I don't care if you're going to Achimota school or whatever, you have to learn to be a woman first. So I was, it was tough. Mm -hmm. I was the first one. Ah. So everything was, I had yeah. to take care of my siblings and that was brought up typical Typical Ghana girl. Ghana girl. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So you mm -hmm. went to England. England. You did nursing. Yes. And then I did. And then I got a school in the U.S. My husband now, then boyfriend, he found. Was he part of the reason you left Ghana? No. <laughs> Auntie <laughs> said. No. Oh, Auntie Not there. at all. Okay. We both. He came to sixth form in Atchmota School. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, but. Well, the way God works, he got a scholarship to go to Dartmouth College in the U.S. Okay. The same year I was also leaving. And he was then he was busy chasing. And then this man did not stop with the chasing. So I was in England and then he was there. Mm -hmm. And when I finished school, he, I got married very early. By 22, bam, he had done my wow. one. Hey, and his father said to him, Oh, buying a lock, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then I went to, he found a school for me to go there. But then my parents said, ah, if you say you are doing nursing, then what people do is they do midwifery too. To, and then so when I come, I can start a midwifery. Yeah. So in the back of my mind, that one, my mother insisted. So I went back to England to do midwifery. But it's like... You know how God orders everything? Because my friends kept saying, ah, but, um, but I did very well, well too, because it was the course, as much as it was difficult for some, mm. I did very well. Even the midwifery was no big deal. I just sailed through it mm. and then went back to England, yeah. I mean, to the U.S. US. to go back to school. Mm. So I did what they called a nurse practitioner course okay. because I had to continue okay. where I do women's clinics. Yeah. I do that the regular pap smears, breast exams and do a lot of patient education. Mm -hmm. So doing what I do now in counseling then, mothers yeah. and fathers, it's been like my um so when people ask me what do you do, I'm a health educator. Yeah. That's what yeah. I so am. it all came together. Exactly. But what was your own childhood dream and ambition? My own Supposedly, my father wanted me to go to med school. Okay. To do science. Well, I did science. Right. And, uh, but, you know, we, we tell children you're going to do this and do that. But then I really didn't know what you I wanted, wanted to. to. I just wanted... Mom was tough. Very loving and tough. But then when I became a teenager, all I kept saying, hmm. One day I leave this house eh, and I'll never All come you back. you wanted to do was to leave the <laughs> <Exactly>. house. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And when I got to England, she was the very first person I missed. Oh. My 21st birthday, I was in England and I cried. I cried for mom. I wish my mother was around and we would cook and bake or something and things. Mm. And people said, hey. You pa and mom. <laughs> because even my friend said, Hey, oh mommy, what's your leg? Because you come to my house at 10 in the morning. Are you serious? Don't you have work to do at your house? <laughs> then you're coming to clean the fish. You could, oh, my friends joined in. Because otherwise, we won't have any. If we Anytime. want to go out, mm -hmm. hey, 
Then you, you have, have to, to finish the work. You have to do maintenance, maintenance thing. Yeah, yeah, you have to. So everybody, now when she died, hey, you should have It was so many. It was, it was her kind of funeral. Never, it was, know. yeah. Because she's like always helping everybody and stuff. And I think people are telling me, you know, you're becoming your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, <laughs> yeah. you see your mom in you. I, I, I don't suffer fools mm. that much. <laughs> I know. That much, I can tell. <laughs> yes. That much, I know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but I see in her altruistic nature, I see that in mm. me. And, mm. you know, taking people in. Now I have two girls in my house from Akotolante. They're relatives. Okay. I take them and you cannot come to my house and be a house girl. You have to go to school. Awesome. Yes. But no, no, no. It's, mm. you know, this house girl thing and especially when they're under age. Mm. And I told my friends, find a way to find them a trade or something to do. Because in this day and age, can you imagine Gifty? If you and I mm -hmm. hadn't had that opportunity, opportunity, yeah, I see people on the streets, and I'm like, this could have been me. Yeah, we'll have a lovely. lovely and so, place. what's your take on parenting today? <sighs> As a parent, you are not your child's friend. I hope a lot of parents will get that. Stop being their friends. Love them to bits. But discipline, not caning. I don't believe in hitting. I was beaten. But from my studies through psychology and whatnot, and, and especially through autism, when you keep hitting a child, you're teaching them aggression. You're teaching them it's okay. Yeah, a tap here or whatever, spank here a little, never hurt anybody. But people are beating children. And then you're not explaining to the child, you did this or what. Did they understand why you are really punishing them to this extent? Punishing. Mm. Are you correcting? Not disciplining, but no, you're punishing. you're punishing them. So this is what, and then, and then some of the, now we have the Gen Z children mm -hmm. and, and mm. stuff. And Gen Alpha. Gen Alpha now, whatever mm. it is that they're, they're called. And we're too into, you know, they are dictating to parents. Excuse me? I mean, no. You are not my friend. When you are become an adult, then we can be friends. But when you are less than 18, I, the parent, I'm responsible for you, and you will be disciplined. Because when we do wrong, God disciplines us. Right. We get checked. So we need to check our children. But some of them, they are like, oh, and then you see them spending so much money on them, taking them out all the time. The last I checked, going to the restaurant today, it's like it costs an arm and a leg. I used to go to a certain restaurant and buy my nice pasta dish. Recently, just three days ago, I just felt like, oh, something different. When I called them and they told me the price, <laughs> and I was buying for a friend also, and I said to her, you know something? Let's get home. I have some nice gravy and, and, and fish. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> and she said, oh, well, I said, no, I can't pay for that. Mm -hmm. Just to think of, I look at all the taxes and things There's and the all, difference. Uh, What's the yeah. point? The controversial aspect is coming <laughs> in. So let me take a break here. <laughs> it comes now. Yeah. I just said, we're talking about pasta. Remind, reminds me of, I, you know, buy this, you know, seafood salad. Uh, really mm. nice and everything. Oh, it was like 70. Then and then I said 90. Mm -hmm. Quite recently, getting back on my weight loss track, I asked, and it's like 220 Ghana cities. I said, well, you know what? I'll do contemporary. Thank you. <laughs> contemporary, <laughs> we're eating. That's also very tough. So I prepare my own salad. Yeah. I don't hope. Well, you're yeah, watching TSP with Getty Auntie, mm -hmm. and I'm talking to Auntie Sewa Kweno, who is the executive director for Autism Center and Training, and a voice for people uh, with disabilities mm -hmm. in her own way. Let me also say thank you to Taida Yekua for my tie and dye. My outfit is by Leran Collections, mm -hmm. um, beads and earrings and anklets mm -hmm. by Trini Crafts. My makeup beautifully done by the Global. 
and um, of course the makeup product from Sigma uh, mm -hmm. by Maybelline. Thank you. Zanti Sewa's makeup is uh, by Pensy uh, Beauty Hub. Thank you so much to them. And then, hey, have I told you about Association International School? Yes, AIS is the top-notch, you know, school mm -hmm. for children from Christ to the diploma level and the level of discipline. They offer the IB system. The children, I'm sure you've seen some of them on the show before. And one thing I love about them is that they are disciplined and they do not play with the Christian nature of the upbringing of the mm. children as well. So, hey, if you're looking for a place to take your child or to change school or whatever, look no further than Association International School, AIS. We'll take a break. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to TSP with Gift and TSA. Thank you to Sigma Health and Beauty for the makeup product supplies. I would also like to say thank you to House of Food and the team. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Vena Mineral Water and Bigo Drinks. You know, Vena has balanced pH level. I've told you. It has all the right minerals that it needs. We also, they are, they are low in sodium and they believe in, mm -hmm. you know, changing lives and sharing love wherever they are. And of course, the Bigo Drinks, we are so thankful to them. And of course, let me say thank you to our sponsor. That's Old Mutual Retirement Salary Plan. <laughs> you know, it's, it's something I cannot, you know, stop talking about. I am a beneficiary. All you need to do is invest a lump sum. As you said, well, you should try. Invest a lump sum into it and you enjoy the, the interest for the rest of your life. Every single month, you get an interest. And this, they didn't ask me to say it, but you know what? Should anything happen to you, God forbid, within 25 years, your next of kin stands to benefit for a very long period of time as well. I mean, you can't go wrong with them. All you need to do is to contact them. Please, their telephone numbers, mm -hmm. the, the code, the short code, everything is on the screen. Contact them and please, please, please make sure that your future, your retirement becomes very, very easy and enjoyable one. Old Mutual, Abrabo Pa, Ahoto, and Kwa. We are so grateful to Kidsville where your children's dreams come true. Now back to Auntie Sewa. And oh, thank you so much too. Let me thank some more people. Um, Suso Foripoko and the family. We are always grateful to you. Our plants, this, and then the palm one from E Gardens, you know, that's Heaven Zen Gardens. I mean, the plants there are amazing. And one thing I love about it is there's a presence presence of God in that garden. When you can go there and pray, you can go there and pray. And when you are bringing that plant home, you go and experience it. Let's you go and experience it. Let me, on that note, let me come to Auntie Sewa and let's talk about, you know, the God factor in your life. You talked about how you left Ghana. All you wanted to do was to leave Ghana. You left Ghana. You went to do nursing and then the midwifery uh, comes in. And somehow it's all come together to, to help you raise your child, Naughty, and then also help other mothers who have children with autism. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, hmm. without God, where would I be? He has ordered mm. every step that I have taken. I mean, he knew it from beginning till now we're in the middle, wherever we're going. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even what I'm doing, Ghana, the name, because I kept thinking, because I, I didn't plan to do this in Ghana. Mm. And uh, I took my son to a different school, but then it didn't work out. But then the teacher that I had found to help me, you know, I kept talking about, so what am I going to do? I say God because my sister sent me somebody who she'd seen at her church mm. that, oh, I have help at home. And so we're just talking 
about what are we going to do? This other girl has come to join us at home. And then I just kept praying about it because you have to go to God and put what I didn't know what I was going to do in Ghana. This was in 1997, mm -hmm. December. Mm -hmm. But then I said, okay, Father God, you, you, you just have to go to him because everything is about him. Mm -hmm. He leads. And if you don't go to him, then you just can't walk around and, you know, you can't just exist. So I put it before him, what am I going to call this thing? I want to take some action because I came and I'd realized that nobody really knew about my son's mm. issues. Right. Not, not that people didn't care, but they had no idea. Yeah. So what was I going to do? And if I'm going to do something, then show me what do I need to do? So it came to me that we needed to raise awareness in a dream. Mm. A, for awareness, he just gave it to me. Autism, awareness, care, and training. The reason we have ACT. It came to me. It was given to me. I did not sit down. And then I woke up. And uh, my husband has a PhD. When he was studying, he would wake up and start jotting things down. I'm like, hey, this Papa cry. Is he okay? <laughs> <laughs> wake up from dream and start writing. And then he's like, oh, I got it. And this was me. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. And I'm writing it down so I don't forget. He said, mm, so you two, you can't you do what? <laughs> and so that's how it's like do exactly raise awareness, yes. give care and training. training. This is not something that I came to Ghana and said, said, oh, I'm going to be doing this as a plan. There was no plan. Mm. It's God has led mm. me through till now. It's just the difficulties, and uh, we can talk about that till the yeah. what, whatever. Yeah. But he's been there. Right. The center has grown from leaps and bounds. Right. Through what we do, I mean, look at this. I've won quite a it's few a, awards. A number of awards. A number of awards. Including the MTN Heroes of Change. of Change. Yes. Yeah. The Millennium Excellence, Excellence Awards. Awards. Yes. Award from the US. Yes. I've been on CNN. Yeah. I've, yep. And this is something and all because awesome. of that child you had. Thank you. That everybody thought was a mistake. I now let's talk a bit about that. You had your son Naughty mm -hmm. in the US. Yes. No, no. He was born here and he I was went born to the here. U.S. with him at six months. Six months. But when he was born here, mm -hmm. did you know that he had autism? No. Until you went to the U.S., you didn't know? I didn't know till about, I didn't even know it was autism. About 15 months for okay. boys, he was not really, I complained to them that he needs to be making, because I have a daughter, yeah. five years older. Mm -hmm. And I saw that the, something about talking. I was only concerned about him not okay. talking. Right. But then the doctor said to me, there, in the U.S. then, that, oh, boys usually talk late, mm. so I should be patient. But about 18 months to two years, I wasn't patient. Because for me, I believe that when I have my children, I would like to be, stay at home with them at least for two years. Right. Before I go back to the world of work. Okay. So here I was with Norte. I would take him to different daycare places so he could get used to it. And that's where the problem was. I would be called to come in and take my child because he would not be attending to what they're doing. They want to take them for a walk. You know, when they put their, their hands together mm -hmm. and just get them all to go. You know, yeah. And he would lie on the floor and just refuse. And I... and. Constantly. I did this about three times. And this was in the U.S.? This was in the U.S. So, and somebody said to me, you know something, you need to see a doctor. And I was upset. And then one day I took him to the pool side and a woman approached me and said, you know, your son does not look at people in the eye. No eye contact. And I was like, oh, how dare you? <laughs> you know, I was upset. But then... I was nudged. Mm. So I called around in the very big hospital, New England uh, Center for a hospital there. 
And then I made the appointment and took him. And with a whole garment of specialists around and coming to tell me, they gave me the word autism. Your son has infantile autism. And then I just was quiet. My husband, for me, I had heard. It just, God, eh? In nursing school, we do uh, three months of psychiatry. This okay. is in England. Okay. And then when at the psychiatric hospital, I had seen a boy sitting by himself and rocking all, all day and, you know, being kind of, he wasn't really being taken care of properly, the, what I know now. Right. And so when I was given this, then my mind went back. I, is this my lot? First thing I said to God, silently, why me? I was going to add, did you shake your face in God? Yes. He really shook it. But what have I done to you? And the tears were coming, but I was trying to hold it together. And uh, as my husband, yeah, he does cry, but the, the tears. So, well, they didn't say anything. Even in America, there was no support, no counseling, nada. Nothing. What I you was just told, told, just told. Like that. Your child has infantile yes. autism. And I same. need to make an appointment to see the social worker that was going to be about another two months away and then the doctor one of them the psychologist had the nerve to tell <laughs> me that don't expect your son to amount to much Ooh. this is you know they just tell you this i didn't sleep that night all night long i did not sleep and so the following day i got don't up expect your son to live up too much. Yes. No, I'm out too much. He won't not go to college. He will not go. This I was told this. And I'm like, eh. But then you're only man yeah, in no my God. head. Those days, my faith, yeah, I used to go to church and I've always been, that's me growing up. It's like, mm -hmm. as one of my pastor once, he says, you are slow. You, you're somebody, you are, I'm like his wife. Mm -hmm. We're slow to God. It's not like we're not, it's not where you get an epiphany, like, boom, right. and now you're, boom, you fall down. And, mm. But I have been slowly, from the age of 10, I think, I, I really knew who Christ was. was. Right. So I, I, I am slow. I, I always remind him, God, I'm here. <laughs> you know, I'm You've with come you. a long way. Yes. I just said, well, what's your greatest fear? Hey, gifty. <laughs> you had to go there. Yeah. <laughs> When I pass, what will what, happen to What Naughty? will happen to Naughty? Because you know what? <clears throat> My faith is strong. Yeah. But then God also gives us wisdom. Yeah. He says, so I'm putting things in place. I'm trusting, I'm trusting God first. That the people I'm leaving to take care of Naughty will do as they, and God will take care of Before today, the tears haven't come. Yeah. Because I've come a long way. way. But that's my greatest fear. And that what, you see, <laughs> I know. you have to go there. But then I look at Naughty, and there's so much he can do. My greatest fear, I, will, I refuse to live in fear. Yeah. I have to. But as a human being, sometimes I sit down and uh, I recently lost my brother in, in July. Yeah. And uh, he slept behind his wife with Alzheimer's. That's also on me, trying to sort her out, rather. And a friend came through, a Muslim friend came through. So yesterday in my Bible class, I asked them, where are he, her Christian siblings, Christian friends, and, uh, and I go to the house. She's there. I'm going there from here. 
and the love they're showing her. This is what I keep saying. Are we showing the love of Christ? My greatest fear is that God himself will make a way. God himself will make a way. But the final one, mm. Auntie Zewa, you have this holy anger <laughs> in you. Mm -hmm. Anytime I hear you mm. speak, you always have to bring in this anger of government, society, failing people with disabilities, with challenges, especially mm -hmm. children with autism in our country. Yes. Why are you so angry about that? Even Jesus got angry. Yeah. About the, excuse me to say, about the foolishness, the that, foolishness. Was, that was going on in the church. I'm nowhere near Jesus. Mm. Who am I? You anticipate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then, you know, usually when people ask me about what's government doing, you know, we set, we make policies that we don't follow. We are one of the first countries to go and sign on to UN conventions. And then we come and then what? And a friend came to, when we were Kukumlimli, he asked me where the Christians were because the goddess were choked. <laughs> so where are the Christians? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness. Thank you. <laughs> and so you see, when I hear, I hear people, government people on TV, and I know they have to get the votes, and I know all these things. But really, how many of them no God as God. Because when they don't speak the truth, and when they come and they can't do something, but at least they must give hope. But the false hope that they give to us, you know, to persons with disabilities, children on the street, university mm -hmm. coming, kids coming out of school, no jobs, and women, and, 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 women, and you, you name it. Because I'm in Hacho now. The air is terrible. Every, right now, it's really bad. And I'm not saying a particular Area, yeah. government. government yeah. All of them. And so it's a different things. I remember I was on the board of persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And we talk and talk. I think we're on it together. No. no. You, 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 I think you uh, came well, after was, me. Yeah. I came, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> I won't even ask you what, what happened. Nothing. 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 So you see where the anger comes from. And then you go and sit there. And even persons, among persons with disabilities, when I was there, they used to see persons with invisible disabilities, like autism, sickle cell. Like, as far as we don't count. And I'm like, what's this? You can't do this because a disability, it's, it doesn't mean inability. But because you person with, so I used to be like the voice to say, oh, yeah. that you're only talking about autism. So, I said, who's talking for us? For us, yeah. She said, but you're on yeah. the board to do, I said, who mentions Mr. autism Mr. or autism and p children like yeah. that? No one. You only talk about the ones we see. see. And that's not, that's not right. So this is where I will, I think I'll keep fighting right. until the end because when something is wrong, mm. it is wrong. In mm. Ghana, you go mm. to the ministry center, mm. Otong, how do you say it? Yeah. A, 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 yeah. What is this? Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's normal. It's not normal to me. Disciplinarians are seen as difficult people. Thank you. Do you Thank get you. that? Yes. And somebody said, hey, and this is what she's changed you before. It was worse. And I'm like, oh, then I'm going to be like before. <laughs> and, uh, because it's about, you know, what you're doing. And we have people's children. We have to. And they say, Auntie Sawa will say, and they, they put, what will Auntie Sawa say? When you don't see your child, it means you're not working. I said, are you? When you don't see the child, child. that you've been given to, are you working? No, because with with what we do and with other places, anything can happen. You know you have a daughter. Yeah. 
you know, and they can be precocious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and with autism, you never know, because yeah. you have to have eyes all over. So you can do this thing properly. And they make fun of me, and I take it very well. And I'm like, I'm going to be me. I, we are in election year. Right. You've heard some of the, mm -hmm. you know, policies being thrown about. Mm. Do you have any hope for the next government, whoever it is? No. Oh. When it comes to disabilities? Yes, when it comes to disability. Until they come and talk to the people and say, we're going to do this and do it, I don't have hope. I'm sorry to say that because... Over the years, I've been in Ghana 26 years. Right. I don't see really much that has been done. For, yeah, we have the, the bill mm. and whatnot. And we're trying to get different things. You know, it's like it's at a standstill. And when we go to government, until they can have a disability ministry, because we have about 20% of people with disabilities in Ghana. That's a lot. So the disability group, it's a whole group that needs to be taken and, you know, taken care of. So you can have a disability, instead of having the billions of ministries of ministers or whatever they have. What about the language that these politicians, some of these politicians use, <laughs> sometimes in attacking their opponents? It's wrong. Sometimes they use, you know, very denigratory, <laughs> yeah. you know, comments. It is. It with is. regards to people with disability. I like you're behaving like a blind, like somebody who uh, has autism, you're uh, behaving like uh, somebody, you know, kind of. You know, until some of them, well, I've heard a few of them, they have persons with disabilities in their parliamentarians or yeah. wherever they are. But until they can come out and be bold to say, yeah. oh, I have a child, I have a nephew, I have a cousin, I have and a so brother. I can identify. I can identify. And yeah. what they're saying, yeah. what they're demanding, they're human beings. Right. And they need to be taken care of. Yeah. They need a portion of the national pie. Yeah, because most of them are cowards. Exactly. They like to hide their Thank children. You. And they are not doing those children any good. No. And those, that's one of the first things we talked about when, you know, you came on this uh, yes. you know, standpoint. And after that, you remember there are yes. lots of calls from people from abroad, from abroad. saying that yes. because they know you are there, yes. they are now willing to, to come, come back. Yes. yes. And those who yes. then started bringing their children out yes. openly. And you know what that has done? The standpoint, that first show, right. till today, people still say, I saw you on Gifty Anti Show. Oh. So, Gifty, Bless them. thank you, thank you too. for what you've done. And it brought so many people out. And yeah. now, the last I heard, there were about 27 autism centers wow. in Ghana. Because, wow. and hearing and us going out and doing the awareness. awareness. But I don't even think the awareness has gone far enough. Because what about the person in Congress to me? Yeah. What about the, you know, we started something in Kumasi and also Tamale. Unfortunately, my head in Tamale passed away. Oh, bless her. And the people there, to, people just do awareness and I've found some small money to support you. Water, pure water, those days. Mm -hmm. And this is why we need money for yes. water. You won't go and find the money yourself. We need to do another program and talk about the autism, you know, this passion. Yeah. But my last question to mm -hmm. you, what legacy would you want to leave? The legacy I would want to leave is that, you know, I did my bit and I just want people to do, follow and, you know, don't let this thing die, that persons with autism and disabilities, we will keep fighting for them. Advocate, advocate, advocate. And that I say it. amen to that. Thank you. Are you cool? Yeah. I... We of the <laughs> standpoint, and TSP with Gifty Auntie, mm -hmm. we are proud of you. Thank you. We see you. And your mm -hmm. selflessness. Thank you. So today we wanted to hear a bit about your own story you. and captured so that you know that behind the voice, behind the advocacy, mm -hmm. behind the activism, behind the holy <laughs> anger, there is this woman 
who yeah. grew up, who started from somewhere yeah. and has traveled the journey. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you're watching TS we would give mm -hmm. TNT and my guest has been anti so I know, I know, I know there's a lot more we need to hear from her. Definitely thank God for life and grace. We'll definitely uh, bring her back. But before we go again, I say thank you to Bigo Drinks, Venom Mineral Water, House of Food, Anti Vera and the team, Mrs. Sofori Poco. We are grateful. Yep, cleaning services to make sure that our environment is always clean. We are so grateful to them. My plants, yes, they are all natural plants. They come from the E Gardens, that's the Heaven Zen Gardens. We're so grateful. Al Cuisine, thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember, next up on our celebration um, list is the Femiston in Tema on the 9th of November. So please come out on that day in your numbers and please support us. And of course, next month on the 15th of October, I'll be releasing my new book, The Princess and Jazz. The story of the pink Maltese, a puppy. And um, please look out for it and get your copy. It's not just about a princess and a puppy, but it talks about, you know, parenting and how as parents we can help our children to fulfill their dreams, even when it sounds impossible to us. I'll be back with a bit of me. What role has your spiritual world played in your journey so far? I would say the biggest thing is intuition. Mm. And it's listening to that intuition. That, that's what I would say. And also, you know, I told you about a bit of my struggles where yeah. at one point I actually got burnt out. So I'm not, I'm not perfect. And in that season of my life, I would say that my spiritual life was actually lacking. Mm. Even just being able to pray, your mind is not free. You're just tired and your prayers are empty. Change doesn't just scare women. It scares everybody because our brains are wired to keep us safe. And so even when we start on a process of change, it's like our brains go, ma, 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 danger, danger, yeah, danger, right. and pull us back. So oftentimes, it's easier to be stuck where you are than face that fear and go out there. It takes so much courage. Have feel, you had those moments where you feel that you have to sometimes maybe lower your standards or the, so that people can warm up to you? Absolutely. In fact, part of the about my six years, my first six years was having to just dim myself, not appear as intelligent because so that people warm up and don't feel intimidated. And it was only a few years ago, again, speaking to a coach and she said, you, know, you should not dim your light for anybody because yes, the wrong people will be repelled by you, but you've got to own your light and you're not doing anyone any harm. <laughs>you know mothering is tough it's very tough and that's something that most mothers feel guilty talking about motherhood fatigue is so real and you know why because you had a life before becoming a mother no matter how desperate you were to have a child like me you had a life before you became a mother and somehow you expected to have a life. And it should be. <laughs> you know, you should be, you should have a life after having children or having a child. But most of the time, it's not like that. You literally lose yourself. You lose your life. Your way of life because of that child. Especially if you don't have, you know, a solid person um, behind you or beside you. And you become the primary caregiver of this child. So mothers, it's okay, it's understandable. When you feel that fatigue, but don't let it turn into resentment. Can you imagine a mother with a child who has a disability? It becomes a full-time job. And if you have to work outside that motherhood circle. You can imagine how it is. Society must be kind to mothers. And to mothers who have children with disabilities, society has to go the extra mile 
to be very kind. Mama, I get you. I go through that too. But we'll make it. Those little angels came because we wanted them. Because God destined them to be in our lives. And he will see us through. Ego be one day at a time. I'm a woman with super crazy faith in God. I know God has got me covered. But yes, I do cry sometimes because of motherhood. Beautiful thing is he's giving us wisdom. We will apply it, trusting that it won't last forever. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.